Thanks for joining me, everybody. My name is Todd Ronan at Reality Forecast. I'm joined with Psychic Remote Viewer Liz Cross. And please like, share, and subscribe to this video. Hey, Liz, I know people like our old-time photos, and this is a woman from an Ogallala tribe. And the Native Americans just have so much more of, of an interesting spirit. And I wondered if we could talk to her and connect with her and see what's on her unconscious spirit mind. Yeah, she's here. Wow. Very powerful. Have her tell me about herself. She had a lot of children, a lot. And she had a lot of grandchildren as well. It, I mean, I don't know. How many children did you have? She had about nine children. That's a big spirit team. Yeah, yeah it is. And she was almost like the matriarch of the of the tribe. Very powerful lady. Yeah, some people can chime in about this tribe. I'm not sure what region they were specific to, but can she tell us if her life was impacted by the North American expansion? And if so, what was that trauma like in her lifetime? Sure. A little bit in so much as they kept themselves to themselves. They did not go around her particular tribe. They did not go around the white man at all, right? They knew instinctively that the white men were dangerous. They stayed well away from them. Um, they believed that the white men were bad spirits and darkness so they they didn't want to intermingle or even come to notice did she always incarnate in different native american tribes or did she incarnate in other cultures um she's come from a long line of different cultures um did you always incarnate i mean she did the native american thing for several lifetimes but prior to that she was in the middle east she was in other tribes she was in african tribes um are you back on the earth plane now no she's she has come back as a regular white woman um she says i didn't like that too much you're too far removed from being able to spiritually connect um so now she's trying to decide where she's going next. On the spirit realm, do you have to play do you have to play the game here on earth and grab as many feathers from different cultures or how does that process over there work? Ooh, um, do you have to grab many different feathers, different experiences from different cultures? You want to be as enlightened as possible. Now, sometimes one lifetime can give you a lot of enlightenment, but a lot of times you have to have a whole range of experiences. She is very spiritual in nature. She doesn't believe in organized religion. She says, been there, done that. Don't want to ever do that again. So I'll wait a little while before I come back down. She says, consciousness is evolving. We're dropping the organized religion and we're becoming more spiritual as a collective. And that's where her entry point is going to be. A lot of people ask about ley lines and the connection to the earth as in a specific grid. Did her culture as a Native American embrace that or did were they able to feel that energy in the earth? Yes, and you you could feel energetically where you were supposed to be. Listen, I get what she's talking about. Have you ever been to a place, Ronan, where 
it just doesn't feel right, like a particular town or city or area. Have you ever felt yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, me too. And and that's energetically, she's saying that's where you have to align your solar plexus to a particular area. Does that area change based on the incarnation or the time of the incarnation life? Yes, it does. More specifically about ley lines, can she explain where that power comes from or what the source of that power is? It's the magnetic pull on the earth. So this is the, the ley lines are, she's telling me, which I've, I've never heard of this, but this is wonderful. Um, she's telling me that it, that's where the, the magnet, like that's the magnet of the earth. That's where the planets are pulling, the moon pulls. It's almost like they're energetic magnets. And this is how the earth plane and those of us are, that are on it are, are being pulled by the planets. And how does that help the physical soul container or the human body that you're incarnating in? to be aligned with those. Because it keeps you on your life path. See, when we're programmed, our life plan is programmed and we come down here to the earth plane, all of that ley line and pulling and planetary alignment, that's all in the programming as well. And that's what controls the energy. It makes it go back and forth, you know, to and from. Yeah. So so that's all in the programming as well. And we react to those energetic shifts, either collectively or individually. Look at that one time when Mercury was in retrograde and all hell was breaking loose all across the world. Uh, everything was going wrong for a lot of people. That was a, a few years ago, if you remember that. What does she wish she could tell her next incarnation so that she won't forget? What piece of advice would she most like to carry on to the earth plane? Just to be at peace. She says uh, there's so much disruption down here. There's so much negativity. There's so much war discord, um, arguing, fighting, making fun of others, uh, in, whether nations or, or ourselves. It's just nobody knows how to live in peace anymore. And they don't want you to live in peace, she says. They want you to be disruptive. They want you to be um, ill at ease. That's Whom? productive for, for the, the people that make the agendas. Whom does she visualize as the they? The people in charge of the world. So the governments, the leaders, the systems, the societal systems, they don't want you to have a peaceful existence. They're always doing things to disrupt the peace. You get a, you get arrested, she says. This is so true. If you disrupt the peace, but they disrupt the peace all the time. She says, does that sound like a fair system? She says, no. So wherever she goes, she wants to pick a very peaceful existence. Now, I'm asking her this question. Which level? See, I knew this. Okay, she's at a higher ascension level than all of us. So you know, there's earth plane ascension levels. Does that mean there's, there's many earths? No, it just means that where we are in our own path of ascension, she's actually quite high up there, which is why she likes tribal and spiritual lifetimes, um, because she's ready to get to the end of all of this reincarnation cycle and not have to do that and receive like angelic status. Okay, so she's quite high up, which is why she has the choice 
of a lifetime of peace. And I, I asked her that. I'm like, is that why you're allowed to choose a more peaceful path? And she said, yes. But you want to choose a more peaceful path because you're damaging, you know, yourself and your consciousness and your chakras and everything else when you come down here and you don't have a peaceful path. So the agenda of they, for whom do they serve since it's not the common good? Themselves. That doesn't seem like a spa, a path to spiritual righteousness. As in they, as in the people that are in charge of all of us. She says right. they serve themselves. What's the solution for us to that dilemma? You have to carve out your own paths of freedom within the law. But you have to, you have to find, you know, peace is freedom. Being at peace with the land, being at peace in the family, being at peace where you are, that's what she defines as the ultimate freedom. Any parting questions, Liz? No, not that I can think of other than I just feel her power. She's extremely powerful, this lady. And full of love. Thank you very much. And thank you, ma'am, for your time and journey on the spirit world sharing with us. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Ronan.